Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Stephen. Happy Vlogmas Day 14. Uh, I am just leaving the hotel. <sighs> A nice hotel. The staff is very nice. The rooms are very welcoming. The walls are made of tissue paper. Uh, my neighbor, the connecting room, was like hacking all night. Like, I wasn't sure if she was getting sick. It sounded like someone was in the lavatory getting sick over and over and over again. And then at five o'clock in the morning, their alarm on their phone went off. I knew it was their phone and that didn't stop. And then their alarm at the bedside table went off and that didn't stop. Uh, I actually had to knock on the door and I, apparently that woke them up, but it was just so loud. Yeah. So. It's crazy. Um, I don't know what part of Norfolk I'm in. I see something over there called Nauticus. I'm gonna Google that and see what that is because the sign looks cool. Otherwise, I'm thinking of walking over to the Chrysler Art Museum. But then, see this and think, well, what's the heck's that? So I'm gonna walk in there first and then see what's going on. The hotel had cookies and hot chocolate outside in the front uh, lobby. Oh. Oh, this is nice, but I'm walking out. It looks like little shops. Not in the mood to spend money. Apparently, Nauticus is a battleship museum, the Battleship Wisconsin. Uh, it's an indoor museum of a battleship. I don't know how interested I am in that. So I'm gonna head towards the museum. It is brisk. Uh, it's 44 degrees. My hands are very cold, but I've got a cookie. And I think that's worth a cold hand. So uh, let's head towards the museum. It's a cute little area. It's a, it's a sweet little area. It's just cold. As I turned my head, I saw this out of the corner of my eye and I thought, oh, all right, I'll walk over. It looks interesting. I'm not really interested in battleships, but eh, it's right here. It's kind of cool. Oh, it is kind of cool. Look at that. There's no one around. Oh, there's a person over there. Good. Huh. All right. Maybe it's more interesting than I thought it would be. And that is an indoor museum, apparently dedicated to this worship. Water. It's very clear and calm. Whoop, I just about walked into that bench. All right. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. All right. I've seen a battleship in person. I think I'm going to continue on to the museum because I'm cold. So I finally made it. Uh, the place is just under a mile from my hotel. Now, I'm dressed nice and cozy in this sweater, but my hands are freezing. Well, this is nice. I don't know what I expected, right? It's an art museum. Should be nice. Oh, there's a uh, hundred kids over there. We'll avoid that. So <laughs> I really am becoming fussy in my older age. I walked into the museum here, very, very pretty. Walked up to a desk and no one's paying attention to him. I'm expecting someone to not going to pay for a ticket into the museum. And I'm standing there and no one's paying attention to me. I'm like, all right, what's going on here? Like, you guys should be more attentive. It's free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's this um, plaque in the front of the museum, which I think is interesting. If you want to pause and read, but the Chrysler Museum uh, acknowledges and honors the indigenous people of this area uh, where the lo museum is located. How cool is that? All right, so there's a small gesture to indigenous people. I'm gonna walk into the gift shop first because it's right there on my left hand side. And I love a good museum gift shop. But then we'll just take a walk around and see what they have here. It's very loud because there's like 200 children over there on tables doing some arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. 
How pretty is that? There's a glass works next door where I'm sure they make these things. So pretty. <laughs> Look at that cat. It's a cute shop. Not as nice as the last museum shop I went into, but those are those Blanco? No, they're not. Those are nice. Can you hear all the children in the background? <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, but this exhibit, as you can see, is of work by Paul McCartney uh, from 1963 to 64 when they were on tour. And uh, there's a ton of photographs in here. Um, I, I can't say, and this is probably sacrilegious, I can't say that I'm the most ardent of uh, Beatles fans. I enjoy it when, it when it pops up, but I never really listened to it on purpose. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is interesting. He took a lot of photos. Oh, look at Ringo. I always thought Ringo was the sexiest of them all. It's the nose, I think. And those eyes. All right, let's find something else I find more interesting. This is the ancient world and non-Western art. I don't know if you can pick it up uh, on the microphone, but there, there's a constant hum of babbling children in the background. Now, I love them on the aircraft, but in person, I'm just not a, a person who loves large masses of children all in one place. Uh, and there are school groups all over the place. So I just realized I have my noise-canceling earbuds in my pocket. Guess what I'm going to be taking advantage of? I love these figures. These are so cool. Up here, see those little circles right there? Those are 2,000-year-old gauges. Do you know the hoops that people put inside the earlobes to stretch open the earlobes? Yeah, those are gauges, but they're 2,000 years old. <laughs> and that isn't creepy at all. Look at that face. Oh, do you hear them? <gasps> Look at this. This is a mortar, like a mortar and pestle where you would ground peppercorns or spices or something. But uh, it's 4,000 years old. 4,000 years old. It's the oldest object in the museum. Look at that tail on that animal form. It's carved out of stone in a perfect spiral. Is that not crazy? with the tools they had at their disposal 4,000 years ago. The patience that went into making that is fascinating. It's amazing. Look at this. It is a dress made of cast glass. And somehow it's very fitting in this space. It's a sarcophagus. And there's an exhibit of small children over there. Uh -huh. Now, I love children in small groups on airplanes. <laughs> but I really have a hard time with large groups of them. I just, the, the noise and the sound... <sighs> just gets up my spine and I can't do it. But um, I have to tell you, I so respect the teachers of these children because they have such love for them that they can handle, I guess, the stresses of the, you know, all the distraction and being pulled in 50,000 different ways and the sounds and the noise and, and the questions and the poking. I just, I could never do it. Uh, but I so appreciate the teacher. Something else I appreciate, look at this. How cool is this? It's like a lantern. A room-sized lantern. Isn't that wild? <laughs> yeah, the kids are a lot, but they're all downstairs now, thank goodness. This is the modern art section.
this is the sound of an adult space. Oh, I'm so pleased. Look at that. Is that a Calder? Is that a Calder mobile? Let's find out. Yes, it is a, a Calder mobile. It's called, uh, what's it called? Totem. That's what it's called. Look at this piece. It's made of uh, cast glass, more cast glass. The color is so delicious. I kind of want to lick it. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, that is so wild. And look at this. Look at this. Wait, wait. I don't want to make you sick spinning around. Look at this tapestry. It's made of belts <laughs> and books. And over here we have a, is that a Lichtenstein? Roy Lichtenstein, I think. Yes, Roy Lichtenstein. Uh, and <laughs> fittingly, it's a, an aircraft. Yeah, it looks like an American Airlines with the stripes on the bottom, right? And look at that piece. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, I want to touch it. Look at that, look at the texture. Isn't that amazing? Look at those colors. <gasps> wow. Wow. That was me as a kid over there in the corner. I thought this was a saddle. It looks like it's a piece of automobile kind of crunched up. Crunched up. And then we have more classical works over here. This is a beautiful museum. Oh, I love this. I'm so drawn by these colors, these turquoises and icy blues. How beautiful is that? Look at that. Fantastic. Charles Sprague Pierce. This is uh, an artist I've always seen in print, but never in person. It's Mary Cassatt. And uh, this piece, it captures the feeling of like uh, a candid Polaroid or something, doesn't it? It doesn't look like studied or practiced. It looks, just looks like it was captured. So beautiful. I love this piece. It's uh, poppies. It's neat. Do you have a favorite flower? Mine is the cosmos. It's a humble flower that grows in roadsides and <laughs> really bad soil, but it's my favorite flower. The cosmos. Why does that look familiar? Hmm. Beautiful. Look at that. George Bellows, 1907. Hmm. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I actually like this. This is fun. Look at that. 1960, 1948. William Bezotti's or something like that. Oh, it's loud all of a sudden. Here we have some religious works. Very pretty. So there's something of a, a sense of unease that I have with as loud as this museum is. And why is it that I'm I feel this sense of disease? Oh, hold on one sec. Oh god. Why do I feel like this? It's because I have expectations. It's me. It's not the kids. It's me. Uh, my expectation is that it's a museum. You should walk around it with a sense of reverence and solemnity. When have I ever used the word solemnity you know, on purpose? Um, but obviously, this is a very different museum. It's a museum to be participated with. You know, it's an active museum, and it's not like a museum where you have to, like, you know. So it's my expectations that are getting me all like, <laughs> so I'm going to practice for the rest of my time here in the museum to just 
chill out and let people enjoy the museum as they're supposed to enjoy it, obviously, loudly. Uh, but uh, yeah, beautiful things, beautiful things. Look at this piece. This is uh, Christ and the Woman Taken. Now look at Jesus and the woman who is an adulteress. Look how beautiful he is, and she's beautiful in her way. But all the other men in the image have like hook noses, misshapen faces. They're all like deformed. Look at him, it looks like a pig. Um, but he's made, the artist has made Jesus and the woman he's defending um, beautiful, which is clearly a statement. But this piece, this piece, as the writing says here, this is where he was defending the adulteress against an angry mob that wants to stone her to death because she had an affair. And this is where Christ uses the phrase, let any of you who is without sin cast the first stone. Uh, so I think that's it's an interesting piece. I'm glad I saw it. All right, as much as I'm trying to practice chilling out, this is my kind of space. The floors are carpeted, so there's no loud shoes on wood. It's quiet. <laughs> this is quite the case of oddities. Look at how the marble shimmers under the light. Beautiful. Look at this piece by Rubens. Um, so it's called A Satyr Holding a Basket of Grapes. The um, reading here says, Re ready for some refreshing grapes? Our satyr, showing dirt under his fingernails, innocently offers a basket of fruit, but the look on his face is incredibly forward, almost uncomfortably erotic. The grapes are not innocent, and the nymph may be in danger. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Look at that face, right? Yeah, she's ready for some grapes. Craziness, that's wonderful. Amazing. Over here is the entrance. Down here, there's a bunch of kids. You know, it's funny, as I look at them, hopefully not looking like a pervert. <laughs> Why is that man looking at those children? Um, it's interesting, as I look at them and I try again to practice patience, love, and tolerance with children, it's funny, they almost look like an art exhibit, like a kinetic art exhibit on their own. Interesting, huh? Something else that's interesting, look at this. All right, cool, right? And right next to it, this piece of art glass. Interesting juxtaposition, right? I wonder if this is made in the art studio, the glass studio next door. And look at this. This is how I feel when I feed pigeons. <laughs> now, not just the artwork, but I'm just so digging the colors on the wall. How beautiful is that color? And then look at this. <gasps> Isn't that beautiful? My mouth is watering. It's so pretty. Oh, look at this. This is uh, huge. It is the North Star, and an angel is visiting Shepherd. Look at that. Just in time for Christmas. Oh, these walls. Look at this. Thomas Moran, 1898. I'm assuming that's Venice. Yep, Venice. And look at the detail. Wild. Look, just so neat. That's wonderful. Look at this little, I don't know, is he an angel? Look at the bat wings. The turtle. How oh, neat. A oh, will of the wisp. Harriet Goodhue Hosmer. What a wonderful name. Uh, mythical imps. Okay. And this one. I just love these little 
bat-winged children with a seashell for a hat and holding a scarab in his hand, a scarab beetle, sitting on a mushroom cap. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's amazing. Isn't this beautiful? It looks like the water is actually moving, doesn't it? Crazy. This is uh, Albert Bierstadt. Uh, that is the Minnehaha Falls waterfall. Neat. Oh, look, a cat. And look at this. Wow. Look at that. Dear. Again, Albert Bierstadt, the Emerald Pool, 1870. Oh, look at the light. Goodness. Gorgeous. Sunset, New York Bay, 1872. Do you hear the children? <laughs> I'm practicing chilling out. Oh my goodness, I've seen that work in books. It's a turkey hanging upside down. It's like a hunting scene kind of here. That's wild. Teddy Roosevelt's door, 1890. Oh, all right, I'm practicing chilling out. Oh my God, it's so loud. <laughs> Look at this piece. <laughs> all right, look at his face. He is seriously regretting something. And this one, oh, he's, he's done, he's tired. That's how I felt last night. Um, this piece is called The Neophyte, First Experience of the Monastery. New to the monastery, a young man gazes woefully at the viewer. He clearly regrets his vows. That is hysterical. Now, here the museum is asking us to compare these two images. First, this young mother with a beautiful sleeping child piece of fruit in their hand, healthy, cared for, safe. And then over here, this woman who is clearly troubled. And rather than holding a baby, she's holding a log, a piece of wood with a baby's bonnet on it. Clearly she's lost a child and she's been driven mad over it. And uh, the museum in this piece here written, is asking us to compare these two images, and that is really heart-rending. Just her eyes. Look. Look. She's been driven mad by her loss. Oh my goodness, that's quite something, right? This, this forces you to read this. Oh, after the tornado. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. The house has been swept away, leaving some odds and ends just oddly placed. Interesting. This looks familiar. I may have seen this in another art book. Symphony number no. one in gold and green, a Mexican symphony, 1925. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Max Peachstein. Interesting. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? I mean, the colors. 
Um, now, it forces me to read the description over here because I'm just trying to grasp what's going on here. Uh, it depicts Normandy. Uh, this is made back in 1907. Uh, the artist, um, Othan Fries, was influenced by Matisse. Uh, and uh, look, at, it's just amazing, the colors. I'm looking down here and I was wondering, is this a stream or a river or something? And is that a figure that's painted to be subtly present or is it something he was painting over, I wonder? This person's gathering something over here. Really neat. Look at this lady. Goodness, she looks haunted. Amazing. This looks like John Singer Sargent or something over there. Oh, and this is another um, Mary Cassatt painting. Again, it just looks like she just happened upon a mother and two children, the older daughter entertaining the baby with a flower. So. So, oh, speaking of pretty, look at these children. Again, I sound like a pervert, but look how beautiful these children are. Oh my God, they're so ghostly. Look, how beautiful. Oh gosh, look at that. Chandelier, candelabra kind of thing, beautiful. Look at that. My God, he looks terrified. Huh. These are, oh, this is um, Orestes, pursued by the Furies. He's avenging his father's death by killing his mother, who must have killed his father. And these are the um, Furies. They are the, the spirits of vengeance. And they are torturing him before his mother, here's her body even, hits the ground, uh, they are making him, uh, you know, feel very guilty and <laughs> look at that face, crazy. Huh. Look at this, it's exquisite. This is Venus, the goddess of love, comforting her son, Cupid, uh, for um, shooting his arrow at the wrong target. But uh, just look at the detail. He's kissing her cheek. Look at his hair and his little wings. And just look at the dimension and texture and open work of just her hair rolling down her back, his little wiggling toes, him clutching at her hair. Look at, he's just holding onto her hair and she's doing the scene to his. Oh, that's fantastic. Look at her toes. Not that I'm into feet or anything, but <laughs> just the detail. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm in the glass gallery and I am fascinated by glass and the technologies necessary to make it and, to, and, and shape it and form it into vessels and things. This piece especially, it's, two, it's from the year 200. The year 200. Look at this, again, around the same time. I mean, uh, the technology needed to do this at the time was, I mean, it was so advanced. I'm fascinated by it. Just crazy. And then look at this piece over here. Hold on. Look at this. It's a tree of glass, and at the bottom, at the base, like fallen leaves, are letters, notes, uh, you know, observations by people. You can actually go over there and write something out. Uh, and then the artist in the near future, I think January, will come and burn all of these in one of the, um, the uh, glass furnaces that they use to make this. Isn't that crazy? 
I mean, the glass section, look at that, so pretty. This is, uh, I believe this is what's called an apern, if I'm not mistaken, but I love this piece here. This one is amazing. These are what are called fairy lights, these three domed pieces. You have a little candle inside and they would glow through that custard glass. And these little trumpets are where you would have a bouquet of little flowers up there, so pretty. This piece is so fun. Uh, and this is an image of what how it might have been used, where there's like cherries, fruits down there, and then little bouquets of exotic blooms, blossoms up there. This one just kills me. I love this. These like roses in glass. Look at that. And then look at this piece. I'm, I'm sorry if you don't like glass, but look at this. Now this is called cameo glass. See the colors? The different colors on there. That's not painted on, that's not glazed, that's different layers of glass that are cut through to create this sort of cam a cameo. That's just the work involved and that this piece didn't shatter while it was being cut is just beyond me. That's amazing. Speaking of cameo glass, look at this, look at this. Just imagine the work. That's different layers of glass that have been cut through to create these colors and patterns and textures. I think that's fascinating. And it didn't shatter while that's being done. Craziness. Look at this, look at that. It's a, um, a tall vase and that beautiful, beautiful color with um, foxglove. That's a foxglove plant, which I think is called digitalis. But, um, oh my God, that's amazing. Amazing. And speaking of amazing, these are Tiffany glass windows. Look at that. Look at that lamp. Oh my God. Those are Tiffany. Oh my gosh. Oh. Amazing. Look at this. Look, this looks like a painting, doesn't it? No, it's a piece of stained glass. That's magic. That's magic. Look, just magic. Look at those. That's crazy. Crazy. This might be my favorite section of the museum. I'm, whole, I'm literally walking around with my hand on my heart. <laughs> like this, I'm walking around like, Verklempt. I mean, I can hardly breathe. Uh, some of this stuff is so amazing. So amazing. Look at, I mean, everywhere I go, there's something you need to see. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Look at this. Those are all pieces, individual pieces of glass. Look. Oh, and look at this. Isn't that magical? <gasps> Look, this is made of glass. Look at that, they're orchids. Now, if you have an opportunity, I'll try and take you there next time I go, but if you have an opportunity, go to the Harvard Museum of Natural History in, um, in Harvard University in Cambridge. They have a, a selection of uh, flowers made from glass and it is indescribable again you look at the technology of the time and the work that was done i'll show them to you next time i'm there which museum was i in recently the last museum i was in i forget it but they had uh that museum where was it was it columbus i forget but they had this artist hanging in the foyer these like boats of glass, these slips of glass. They almost look like, uh, I don't know, I can't even imagine what they, they look like to me. They're just amazing. And look at this. <laughs> that just makes me happy. That just makes me happy. I don't know why. Look at that. And look at this face. Look at this face. Look at the, look, the holographic 
sort of visual texture that happens here. <gasps> Look at that. That was blown out of glass. Craziness. Look at this. Can, look, that's made of glass. Look, can you look inside there? Look inside. It's like a sea urchin of glass. That is magnificent. I can hardly breathe. And then there's this. Come on. Look. That is fascinating. That's fascinating. Astronomical calendar sphere, 1994. That's crazy. And I'm walking through the museum, heading towards the exit, and I see this little fragment of glass, little teeny piece of broken glass, and it stops me in my tracks. Can you see? It's a piece of cameo glass we talked about earlier. It's a little piece of, a little shard of glass. Now, wait. From the year 25 to 100, the Roman Empire. What technology did we lose where people in the year 25 could make, that's 2,000 years ago. Uh, could make something so advanced. Glass, number one. Ca cameo glass, carved glass. Like, somewhere along the way, we lost something of technology. Because if, where would we be? If they could do that back 2,000 years ago, I mean, what would we be as a race? We lost something along the way. Uh, we had to have. Um, oh God, I love this place. This is a great museum. And it's free. Insane. This is outside. Yeah, I definitely have to come back here in warmer weather. <laughs> this is fun. Look, it's like, uh, it's a dancing woman, but her head is of a horse. <laughs> That's interesting, huh? Charles Atlas. Okay. Okay. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Not my thing. I'm back in the museum gift shop. I'm looking for a magnet for my refrigerator. I could not not look at this cat, $161. But look at these. How beautiful are these pieces of glass? Isn't that beautiful? It reminds me of a uh, Klimt painting, doesn't it? Beautiful. And this one, that's extraordinary. I love that. How much is that? 275. Beautiful. I found the one magnet that they sold of the museum. I have a collection of magnets of places I've been, places I liked, uh, and uh, places especially that I want to come back to, and this is definitely one of them. Uh, but uh, I am famished. I'm going to stop into their cafe here, and I'm thinking getting the Zinnia Burger. Listen to this. Ground chuck brisket short rib chop house blend burger. Pimento cheese, pepper, bacon, romaine, tomato, red onion, maple bourbon, bourbon pickles on a brioche roll. Sign me up. Thank you. Look at this. Oh, thank you so much. This is like magic on a plate. I'm so excited. Thank you. There's grated Parmesan on the french fries. Oh, so good. Mmm, mmm. And they're hot. And yummy. Mmm. I'm so happy.
Thank you. That was quite possibly the best burger I've ever had in my life. Oh my God. And it was basically the same price as a burger purchased in the airport. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Sumptuous. And uh, this day is so beautiful. It's warmed up a little bit. It's still very bright. Um, this is a little conservatory, a little nature conservatory. I guess the, the wetlands around this bit of water. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to head back in the direction of the... Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so full. I'm going to head back in the direction of a hotel. And eh, maybe something else might distract me. But uh, boy, I feel very satisfied with my experience today. What a fantastic museum. And it was free. You got to go. You got to go. It's amazing. These houses are fantastic down here. Just beautiful. This reminds me a lot of a house I lived in in Dorchester just before I moved to Florida. My friend uh, Lex and David owned that house. Just beautiful. But just a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. So charming. On the way back to the hotel, I found this little park, which uh, is supposed to be sort of a Japanese pagoda uh, with um, a koi pond of some kind. I hear water, and I see it through the bushes there. Beautiful. And there's a sort of a pagoda shape there. I can't quite see it because of the sun, but let's walk over there. It's a beautiful day. It is a little fresh, but beautiful. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Huh. Well, if there's koi in there, they are hibernating because it's very cold. Interesting. Yeah, that's very nice. Imagine living right there. Well. And I think there's a waterfront over here. Oh, look at that. Huh, let's go take a walk along the water. Oh, I am so glad I didn't stay in my hotel room. <laughs> What a great day. Thanks for coming along with me. Oh, hi, ducks. Hi, little ducks. There's some mom and dad and some babies. Or adolescents, I should say. The water's very calm. Look at that. The way the water is eating away at the wood. Those clams and barnacles or oysters, whatever they are. Look at the way the, the water, the wood has been eaten away. That's wild. Ooh, if I was chilly earlier, it's doubly so now. Oh my goodness, the wind is coming off this water. But, uh, oh, it's so pretty out here. Imagine living right there in the corner. Goodness, there's a huge ship over there. Is that the ship I saw earlier? No, actually, that's the Wisconsin right there. So that's the direction I have to head back to the hotel. It doesn't look like I can walk over there. So back I go. All right. I'm impressed. I wasn't terribly interested earlier, but it's a pretty impressive ship, right? Huh. The more I look at it, the more impressive it gets. The lines are beautiful. Well, I got my magnet for uh, Norfolk. The uh, visitor center for Norfolk happens to be very close to our hotel, so I just popped in there. Uh, it looked like a market of some kind, like a little sort of festival marketplace, but it's really just a visitor center. But I walked in and the woman who was manning the center 
I think she was startled that I walked in because I don't know many people walk into the visitor center. Uh, but we had a wonderful little chat. She gave me some great direction to uh, where I, if I come back here to Norfolk um, to check out some other places. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping to come back here. It was just a lovely, lovely layover. But now... I need to go upstairs. I'm going to have a bite of chocolate, I think. Maybe scroll around online and then think about going to bed fairly early. I've got a, a 4.50 a.m. show tomorrow. I'm sorry, van tomorrow. So I've got to get to bed pretty early tonight. But, you know, it's only... It's really only 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I think it's time for Starfield. Another treat from the front lobby. Very happy. And... Oh, I'll be in the room soon. Shoes off, clothes off, very happy. Well, the view is not vastly improved by daylight. It was... <laughs> it's all right. It's just kind of urban. But it's better than the top of a parking garage that I usually get. But there is water over there. Oh, I think I'm going to end this vlog here. What a wonderful layover. I hope I didn't bore you too much with the museum walk. I just adore museums. One of my favorite things to do on a layover is go to a Goodwill or a museum. But uh, it was a really great museum. I have to go back. Uh, and there's a few other things I want to check out next time I'm here that are actually pretty close to um, our hotel. So that'd be very nice. I hope to be able to get another long layover here in Norfolk if we keep this as a route. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. I'm going to end the day because I'm already taking off my shirt. I need to get out of these clothes. I'm going to jump on my computer for a little while, play a video game, and then nestle myself back into that little bed. And I will see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks for flying with it. Thanks for joining me, I should say. Fly safe. Bye.